Pastor Lana, are you good this morning? Let's go to the word of God. Hallelujah. Please, I lose the Yeah. What could be more than being in the presence of the Lord? Even Nama Poro Poro, we now go home finally. Finally, in Jablay Tinga Zuli, Yoguba Sekoni, Yoguba Sekoni, and Gankulunkul. Amen. Are we happy people this morning? Hey, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Acts chapter number 16. Please turn with me to the book of Acts. Chapter number 16. We are going to start reading from verse 25 to 34. Are you there? Acts chapter number 16, verse 25 to 34. I'm going to read it in the King James Version. I told them, Epinoni, Uguti, Champions Booz, Utu, Yinda, Mamfundisi, Echusa, E King James Version. It is because I want to feel anointed. I want to feel like a woman of God. Right. Mamfunda, Uguti, King James Version, you feel very much anointed. Uzozwa, now, Uguti, I know. I know, I know. I amen. As for the Nigabas alone, 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bonds were loosed. And the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Do thyself no harm. For we are all here. I'm on Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Says, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved in thy house. 32. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and, to, and, and all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and, and washed their stripes and was baptized. The same person of Bebashaya is now the same person who washes their stripes. And was baptized. He and all his straight way. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. Anoint us, so God, both to speak and to hear your word. We lean on you and we trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, each time we get into a battle, each time we find ourselves in a situation that is not favorable to us, each time we find ourselves in a circumstance that we can't take ourselves out of, it is often such a, 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 a tempting thing to believe and to think that God is not with us. Amen. And we think that God has forsaken us. And we then we ask ourselves, but you said you will never leave us and you will never forsake us. How come I feel like you are not with me as I am going through this fire? How come you are not quenching this fire because I am in it? But then sometimes God does not take us out of battles. Sometimes God does not take us out of situations that are not favorable to us because God is there with us. Sometimes God protects us even 
though we are in the fire, just like Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, they were inside the fire, but they were not being consumed. Probably they started praying to say, Lord, take us out of this fire, just like the prayers we make, you and I. Each time we get ourselves in situations, as in Zima, we say, Lord, take me out of this situation. And maybe sometimes God does not take you out. And in most cases, God does not take you out. But God is there with you. That is why you are seated here this morning. You did not die from the situation you were in. That's why you are here this morning and you did not collapse from the situation you were facing. Why? It is because God was with you in the fire. God was with you in the battle. Hallelujah. So we get tempted to just sulk and say, Lord, you are not with me. You are with others that I see everything is going well with their, with their lives. And it's because you are with them, but you are not with me. But God is always with us. So sometimes you think there is no way out. So this morning, I'm here to let you know that there is a way out. And the way out is radical praise. Radical praise. That's your way out. You need to decide to engage in radical praise. Each time you find yourself in a battle, engage in radical praise. And you need to, to develop a imasel lo kwa zoom to me sunkulunkulu gishangabek to isimas vumi. So you need to engage in radical praise. Maybe someone is asking, but what is praise? Simply put, to me, praise is glorifying God. Praise is, is thanking God. Praise is acknowledging and declaring that God is the greatest. That there is no one that can compare to him. That's what praise is to me. It is to give him thanks it is to declare his greatness. It is to thank him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well then, sometimes when you don't know how to do things or when you don't know how you are supposed to go about doing something, that thing does not yield results for you. Amen? But if you are informed about it and you know what to do and how to do it, then... Uh, it, it yields results for us. So now, I just want us to see a few points that will teach us and that will show us uh, what praise can do for us. Amen. Because if you, um, if you don't know what it can do for you, you will think maybe see as Lalela as we are talking about engaging in radical praise. So I just want to help somebody this morning to understand what it, it is to praise God. Amen. So number one, number one, praise is expressed. You, we need to know that praise is expressed. Come on. We need to know that praise is expressed. Yes, praise is expressed. Maybe someone is asking what is to, ex to express. To express is to put into words. To express is to utter. And to express is to show. So if you are not showing that you are praising God and you are not uttering, there is no utterance that you are praising God, then you are not praising God. Because praise is expressed. Amen. I've heard so many people, I don't know about you, but I've heard so many people who say, no, I praise inside. But I just want to let you know that this, I want to let you know this morning that praising inside is not going to help you in any way. You might as well divorce praising inside and start uttering something. Start saying something to the Lord. Amen. Have you seen people when we are praising, they look at us as though we are crazy. But when they are at parties.
when we are here in the presence of the Lord, the Mzalwane is on some folding of arms and some scrolling on the phone and some biting of nails and some looking around, what are you guys on about? And yet when you find the very same person in their circles, you find a completely different person. And let me tell you something. I'm a piano. I'm gaga as they are key banking game. U dance a linda wrong. I'm not king and a piano. Namigal dance a manga and feel like old dance. Maufunu will dance a no problem. But don't commit to Ipina Ipiano too much at the expense of praising God. You cannot be, you cannot be. Uh, uh, you cannot be giving all the styles there, there is out there when the piano is playing. And when we are singing, praising God, telling him how good he is, telling him how awesome he is, telling him that we are grateful that he has woken us up this morning and you are folding your arms, then your passion is in the wrong place and your passion is well on your way of killing you. Praise is expressed. But I can't express, express myself. And yet we know you in, in, in the boardroom. You express yourself. We know you at work. You express yourself. We know you in fact. Even maybe your husband or your wife is surprised at church because the way you talk at home. Ah! In fact, the man can't the man doesn't know what to do with you anymore. Because the, the fly is going past. You are talking. But when it comes to the presence of the Lord, you are very quiet. Ah, the man. The man is shocked. The woman is shocked. Which one is this one next to me today? Praise is expressed. Open your mouth. Say something to the Lord. It will help you a great deal. Praise is shown. It is expressed. It is shown. Show something to the Lord to say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I am grateful. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are beautiful. Show something. You show it. Hey, Ndawen. Show it. Oh, Munya Ati. No, but Mina, I can't express myself in front of people. Even though I talk at home, even though I'm talkative at work, eh, but it's just a few people. I can't. I can't express myself in front of people. I can't just jump at church just like the others are jumping. I can't lift up my hands just like the others. I can't express myself. Look at this. Look at this. But they say, I, but I can only express myself in a small group of people or at home or the people that I know. Listen to what the word says. The Bible says in Psalm chapter number 35 verse 8, the Bible says, I will give you thanks in the great congregation. Not alone. Thank God in private and thank God in public. Praise God in private and praise God in public. In a great con congregation, and then it continues to say, I will praise you among much people. Doesn't matter how many people are there. But when, you, when I, I have to get my praise on, I will get my praise on. Because there is no one who can take me out of the situation I am in except God. And therefore, I will not let anyone stop me from praising my God. Because they are not going to be able to help me. So in Daba, Yoguti, Unkulunkulu, Aga Pashel, Ayikuncha of Yatandu Pashel, Abanda Bangatandu Papel, Manda and Papela Band, Ulunga Unkulunkul. 
One day, a senior brother of, of mine in the church, whom I looked up to very much, I was very hurt on that day. Others know the story. After church, he walked up to me and said, Mazot, I But praise be to God, I realized he is quenching the fire. He is quenching the fire. He is quenching the fire. I said, no, maybe I wouldn't be where I am today had I listened to him. But Monday, all throughout scripture, that's why I to pray at all times. When I say, all the time, hey, 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 all the time, like, like from morning to the evening, the person is here. They are talking right in your ear. How much about God? Million, billions and billions and trillions of people talking to him. Why? Because God likes to listen to his people. When I in the presence of the Lord. So, if you love your shyness and if you love your timidity, it's okay. No problem. I'll let you keep it. But as for me, I would rather you don't keep it anywhere for that matter. But for the purposes of cushioning you, you can keep it. Keep your shyness. Keep your timidity. But please, Keep it where to people, but not to God. When it comes to God and when it comes to the presence of the Lord, shake it off and say, I'm going to get my praise on. I'm going to get my praise on. I'm going to get my praise on because I know that God will come through for me and it's only him who will come through for me. Express your praise. Express yourself to God. Number two, praise is a biblical command. Praise is a biblical, what? Command. In the book of Psalms, chapter number 150, verse 6, the Bible says, let everything, what does it say? What does it say? What does it say? Let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Do you have breath? Yeah, because if you don't have breath, the people seated next to you would have run away and we were, we were going to be disturbed and we were going to ask, what's going on over there? What's going on over there? Because there's someone who doesn't have breath. It means someone has died. But the Bible commands, it does not suggest that we must praise the Lord. But it says everything that has breath must praise the Lord. Do you have breath? Do you have breath? Then praise the Lord. You are to praise the Lord. It says let everything that has breath. It does not say those who can. It does not say those who can sing. It does not say those uh, who are not shy. It does not say, if your personality agrees with the way of praising God, uh, please praise God. But it commands. It's a biblical command. It says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. It is not a, a suggestion. It is a command. It means that it is necessary. For everything that breathes to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So for as long as you have breath in your lungs, then you must praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You have to praise God. It's, it, 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 it has got nothing to do with how you are and, and, and your personality and all of that, Bazalwan. No. It's an expression of thanksgiving, a declaration of his greatness. It has nothing to do 
with your personality. Hallelujah. So we are all commanded to praise the Lord. Number three. Number three. Praise shifts our focus from ourselves to God. That's what praise does. It shifts our focus from ourselves to God. And in this day and age, we live in the times of selfies. And selfies are all about me, myself, and I. Look at me, how beautiful I am. Look at me. Look at, look, hey, hey, take out your phone. Au vuli camera. Uba no lap. Uba no lap. So in case you didn't know what I was talking about, I'm talking about exactly that. You are so focused on yourself. We, are, we have become people who are so focused on ourselves. We, yes, we are. We are self-conscious. We, we, we want the world to see what we do. We want the world to see how we live our lives. We want the world to know about us and about the things that we achieve and about the things that we do and about the places we go to and the people we hang around with. It's all about us. Selfie here, selfie there. Look at me. Look at me. Look at what I'm doing. That's what, that's what selfies are about. Look at how, what I have achieved. Look at what, I, at, what, at what I have done. One day, I saw a picture, a selfie. And the lady was on a boat. And just like the Titanic... The lady was on the edge of the boat. The great sea was behind the lady. The lady didn't care about the great sea behind her. The lady was, by, was about herself. How beautiful I look on this boat, number one. Number two, look at me, I'm in the boat. Number three, you can't be where I am. You can't sit with us. I just woke up like this. Hey. Why? Because we are self-conscious. Because we have drawn the focus to ourselves. I'm not saying it is wrong to take a selfie. Please hear me well. I take selfies. In fact, I can even show you right now. I can take a, a selfie. Yes, I love selfies. I post selfies as well. But I want us to know that we must never get to a point where the likes and the comments will elevate us above God. We must guard ourselves with all that we are and with all that we can. Because sometimes you even get so discouraged if people did not say you look beautiful. Because when you took the selfie, you really saw that you are actually very much beautiful today. So that is why you were even showing the world how beautiful you looked on that particular day. And when they don't respond the way you want them to respond. Why? Because now the focus, you have taken this thing so seriously. You have taken it so seriously. The focus is on you. The focus is on you. But when you praise, you are shifting the focus to be to God. Because even though they can say, wow, you have achieved, you will know who has helped you to achieve. When they say, wow, you are able to do this in day in cool, you will know who has enabled you 
to do great things. You will know if you are a praiser. But if you are a person who does not praise God at all times, you will take the praise to yourself. And the day it does not come will be the end of you. The day it does not come will be the end of you. Therefore, it's important to say, Lord, I will praise you at all times. And become, cultivate this thing of being a praiser. I know it's not by might, nor by power. It is by your spirit. You are supreme. You are the one who sits on the throne. Otherwise, you can do this thing all by yourself. You are God. Praising God will shift the focus from you to God. Maybe you have heard, I also do it. Abantu, they usually say, Mangabumbo umnoma. Ati. Hey, I bless the Lord. Oh, I praise God. I give glory to God. Why? It is because they acknowledge the fact that the focus must not be on me, but the focus must be on God because he is the one who enables us. Amen. Look at what the Bible says in, in Psalm chapter number uh, 150 verse 2. It says, praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness because he does mighty things. So we need to praise him. Number four, I'm rushing my time. Praise because the presence of God, uh, sorry, praise brings the presence of God. So you must praise for the presence of God to come, right? So number four, praise brings the presence of God. God dwells close to us when we praise him. God looks for praise. He looks for a place where he is praised. So when we are not praising God, then we don't care about his presence. That is why it is important that you praise God in your life so that God can be in your life. It is important that you praise God in your house so that God will be in your house. Because God loves praise. It's as if God feeds on praise. Because then the Bible says, look at this. The Bible says uh, 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 in Psalms chapter number 22 verse 3, the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. He dwells where there is praise. He dwells there. So if you want God to live with you in your house, if you want God in your marriage, if you want God in your house, if you want God in your business, if you want God in your workplace, then you must praise so that he will inhabit your praise and he will dwell in your praise. And then the Bible says, the Bible also says that uh, in the presence of the Lord, there is the fullness of joy. So once you bring the, the, the presence of the Lord uh, into your situation, once you bring the presence of the Lord by praising him, once you bring his presence into your situation, then there is fullness of joy. Then there is joy unspeakable. And everyone will be wondering, how come you are not depressed? How come you are not uh, 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 behind closed door and you don't want to talk to anybody? Why? It is because you are a praiser. And, and in his presence, there is the fullness of joy. And then it's, it goes on to say that at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. I said to Pinoni uh, uh, that I honestly don't think that God can come and he, and in, uh, and in with his, by his presence and inhabit your praises and leave his right hand uh, in heaven. So it is a sacrifice to praise God sometimes because you are tired, because you are weary. You feel like you can't utter a, any good word towards God. You feel like you can't say anything nice to him because of the situation you find yourself in. But it is what a sacrifice. Look at what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter number 11, verse 15. The Bible says, therefore by him, let us continually 
offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. And then the book of Psalms, chapter number 18, verse 34, the Bible says, He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. Why? When you lift up your hands and you praise, the Lord strengthens you. Hallelujah. And the Lord makes it a point that you win because you are sacrificing even though you are in the middle of war, even though you are in the middle of a, a battle. But when you lift up your hands in praise, he teaches your hands, he teaches your hands to make war. And people will wonder, how did she come out of this one? How did he come out of this one? But it is because you are a person who has lifted up his hands and praised God in the midst of it all. Amen. So it is important that we make sure that we praise God even as a sacrifice. Even when you are saying to your heart, I honestly don't feel like doing this, but I'm going to do it anyway. I don't feel like praying, but I'm going to pray anyway. I don't feel like lifting up my hands, but I'm going to lift up my hands anyway. I don't feel like shouting in your presence, but I'll shout anyway. I don't feel like proclaiming your greatness, but I will proclaim it anyway. Why? Because I know that you teach my fingers, you teach my hands to make war. And each time I praise, I win. If you don't believe me, you can ask Moses in the book of Exodus chapter number 17 verse 11. Moses, the Bible says, as long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. Could it be that maybe you have lowered your hands? Could it be that maybe you are so blessed, you, the money is just so heavy in your hands, you can't lift up your hands to the great God? Could it be that the blessing is so heavy on you in such a way that you can't jump when it's time to jump and praise the Lord? Could it be? Then losing is coming. I'm not going to stand here and tell you that you are going to be okay, you are fine, uh, like that because there are people who don't shout. There are people who don't jump around. There are people who pray softly. Why not? They don't have the problems you have. They don't have the problems you have. That's why they are quiet. That's why their praise is so quiet. That's why they can't jump. That's why they can't lift up their hands. That's why they can't shout. But as for me, I will proclaim his greatness so that my praise will make him to come and inhabit my praises. And he will deal with my situation. Maybe they are not going through what you are going through. That is why they are so chilled. Maybe all they are thinking about is going to the beach. I'm closing. I'm closing. Moses was right in the middle of a battle. Right in the middle of a war. And he lifted up his hands anyway. What's your excuse? What's your excuse? For as long as his hands were lifted up, the Israelites were winning. Start taking praise seriously in your own personal life and even in the house of the Lord because it's war. Lift up your hands when it's time to lift up your hands. Shout! when it's time to shout. Sing when it's time to sing. Jump when it's time to jump. Utter something to the Lord. Say something to God. We even give you the, the, the lyrics. We give you 
what to say to God. If you don't know what to say, you don't have to sing it. Just say it. Say, I will praise you with my whole heart. I will speak of your marvelous deeds. Tell him how beautiful he is. Tell him he has never lost a battle. That is a praise. Tell him he's capable of winning any kind of a battle. Hallelujah. Number five. I'm closing. Number six, sorry. Praise manifests the power of God. And when the power of God is manifest, we experience miracles, signs, and wonders. So when we praise, we are allowing the power of God to be made manifest. We are saying, Lord, we are interested in you manifesting your power. We are saying, Lord, when you come to inhabit our praises, don't just come and tickle us. Don't just come so that we feel good. But when you come and inhabit our praises, we want to see your power. And when his power is made manifest, miracles, signs, and wonders. That is why I urge us this morning that we engage in radical praise. Just like Paul and Silas, when they were in jail, when they had shackles on their feet, when they had chains all over them, when they couldn't get out of the situation they were in. But the Bible says, as we read, that in the midnight hour, it means it was dark. Just like in your situation, just like in your circumstance, just like in that which you are facing right now, it was so dark. Just like the thing that you are fighting, just like the battle that you are busy fighting, it is so dark, it's midnight hour. It is at the crack of dawn where it is the darkest. I don't know about you, Basalwan, but I've been in that kind of a situation. I've been challenged before and it felt so dark all around me. It was as if there is no light at the end of the tunnel. It was so dark, it felt like it was indeed the midnight hour. Hallelujah! But lo and behold, as it was the midnight hour for Paul and for Silas, not just midnight hour only, but they were in shackles. They were in pain. They had been beaten all over. And it was not a favorable situation. It was not good for them. But in the midnight hour, the Bible says they prayed. So, and they praised in songs. The Bible says they sang songs of praise right in the midnight hour right in the midnight hour right in the midnight hour right where they thought have you ever been in a situation where you felt like I get this is the end of me and come tomorrow morning it was not the end of you you are still alive alive and kicking to face another day to face another challenge why because the Lord is with you. So when you praise, just like Paul and Silas, it doesn't have to be in a good place. It doesn't have to be in a favorable place. It does not have to be in a place where you are cushioned. It does not, you must come out of your comfort zone. Each time you feel like it's in those others happy, get the Lofunangayo. Maybe it's time you get your praise on. When you feel like there is no way out, I'm here to prophesy. It's time to get your praise on. It's your time to get your praise on. Just like Paul and Silas, they were in jail, and the, the situation was so, it was so not favorable in such a way that you must go home and read the whole chapter. You will see they were put into jail for praising God. They were put into jail for proclaiming His greatness. They were put into jail for showing how great he is. And then they were put into jail. So tell me, how can I do something that has put me in this 
situation in the first place? How can I? How can I? How can I? How can Paul and Silas be so bold to do exactly the very thing that has caused them to be in shackles? What gives them the boldness?
devil won't know what hit him. The devil won't know what hit him. We praise you anyway. The devil won't know what what hit him. We praise you anyway. The devil won't know what hit him. We praise you anyway. The devil won't know what hit him. We praise you anyway. We praise you anyway. We praise you anyway. We are here to declare. Now we know. Now we know. Now we know. We are going to be radical praisers. Paul and Silas were radical. That's why they did the very thing that put them in jail, inside jail. They were radical. They were radical. That's why God came in his power and rescued them. The doors opened. The doors opened. I see a door opening for you. I see a door opening for you. I see doors being opened. Both to go out and to come in. I see doors being opened. Because you have made a decision to be a radical praiser. Come on, give the Lord praise in this place. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a clap of praise. Give the Lord a clap of praise. Give the Lord a clap of praise. Hallelujah. Before you go, I want to declare that your life will never be the same again. My life will never be the same again. I'm going to praise him in the morning. I'm going to praise him in the noonday. I'm going to praise him at night. I'm going to praise him whether I feel like or not. I'm going to praise him and he will inhabit my praises and he will open doors for me. Go and be blessed in the coming week in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Une baptism.